Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's Busiest Music Nerd. Hope you're doing well. And uh, today I'm going to be reacting to a <laughs> review of me. I've been reviewed, essentially. I have been reviewed uh, by the Dean of American Rock Critics, Mr. Robert Criscow who has been a leading voice in the world of music journalism and music reviews for a very, very long time. Uh, respect to the God. Uh, not only that, but I do respect a guy who does sort of come with, you know, a handle, a calling card, the Dean of American Rock Critics, the Internet's busiest music nerd. I highly respect that. Look, it's, it's rare that someone that is of uh, Robert's generation and is cut from his cloth is uh, speaking on or paying attention to me. So this is kind of a rare moment. Uh, so let me just read into it and, and let's just see what he says. Um, so it seems like Anthony Fantano's by far the most discussed music reviewer on the internet these days. Have you watched any of his reviews? Do you think he's a good critic? And uh, then Robert goes on to say, I don't watch reviews, I read writing. When I'm at a computer, I almost never click on links to podcasts or televised news uh, much less criticism for two reasons. First, reading is faster than listening. And second, I'm continually using my ears to listen to music. So uh, I did post this uh, spiel that he went on uh, to Instagram yesterday, and there was a lot of harsh reactions to it, especially this bit. I think the reason why is that this is most likely... <laughs> Uh, the section of Robert's commentary that my viewers may take offense to the most because they obviously enjoy watching reviews. So Robert sort of right out of the gate uh, in a way is guaranteeing that they're not going to listen to anything that he's saying because he's kind of poo-pooing on their primary format when it comes to just enjoying or uh, consuming art or music or cultural criticism, because uh, a lot of that these days has kind of been put into the hands of not necessarily gatekeepers who are working for large publications, but uh, people like not only me, but also like, uh, I don't know, the angry video game nerd, you know, who years and years and years ago hopped onto YouTube to uh, complain and rant and rave about some of the worst video games he's ever played uh, over the course of his life. For Robert to sort of come out and crap over the medium uh, just as a concept is, you know, uh, just dismiss it uh, without even really kind of explaining uh, deeply as to why is, I don't know, in my opinion, not the best look. Uh, I do find it interesting that he finds reading faster than listening, but the guy's been writing and reading for years, and maybe for him personally it is, but uh, do keep in mind there are a lot of uh, <laughs> podcast platforms, and also on YouTube, uh, you can play the videos two times as fast. Uh, you could even decide to play this video two times the speed if you want to get through it faster as well. But uh, as a music reviewer and as a music critic, uh, I do sort of understand that Robert is listening to music all the time. I myself uh, think about just how much music listening and reviewing I could possibly get done if I were writing instead of doing this in video. So I do think Robert does certainly have a point uh, in terms of writing and text's simplicity and convenience in a way. Uh, sure, it does ask a little bit more of the consumer, but for the reviewer and the creator, it would certainly be you know a lot simpler for me to sort of pump out a bunch of text-based reviews than it would be to write a script, then shoot the video, then make sure all of this technical shit having to do with the video over a long period of time is uh, making sense, functional, and continues to stay functional, then get that edited, then go over it again, and then eventually release it. Uh, I have to upload it to the internet instead of just simply one-click publishing. So it does become a bit of a time-consuming thing. So, uh, you know, Robert certainly does make some points here, uh, even if younger viewers who uh, read what he's saying here may not necessarily uh, glean much from it outside of, hey, he doesn't like you know, reviews on video. Uh, although, um, I will say that uh, uh, I, I don't really care for, uh, uh, you know, a tone that he kind of takes uh, with this later in his spiel, but we'll kind of get into that after. Uh, moving on from there, he says, moreover, no one I know 
uh, discusses Anthony Van Tano, a name I barely recognized, um, which I'm fine with. Uh, I don't need to appeal to everybody. I know I don't appeal to everybody. Um, I, know, <laughs> I know that, you know, sort of claiming the title of uh, one of the most popular music critics out there is not necessarily like, you know, going to make me a household name or anything like that, which is completely fine. Um, and honestly, uh, I I would actually say I kind of prefer it this way. Uh, I do kind of like being in my own lane and in my own niche. I don't uh, attempt to try to challenge Robert or anybody who is sort of cut from his cloth and doing what I do. I just do what I enjoy doing. I do it for my audience and my audience consumes it. Uh, I'm not doing this to get in the craw of anybody working in the industry. I actually think Robert's attitude is more sensible than that of some people in the music industry, especially on the writing side, who for uh, no reason are fucking are obsessed with me and hate me and uh, <laughs> wish to do awful things to me. So um, I can respect Robert's just general neutrality and lack of interest in what I do here. If what I do does not appeal to you and it's uh, not a challenge to you and uh, you don't care for the tone, the format, the style, then ignore it. You know, you don't, you don't got to watch it. You don't got to watch me. So, I mean, Robert's position here, I can totally respect. You know, he's a man who knows what he wants and he wants it a certain way. And uh, I'm not delivering it in that way. So he, you know, really has no strong opinions on me right there. Uh, in regards to that, uh, glancing over uh, glancing over his Wikipedia entry, he seems to have arrived at a plausible brand of 21st century rock crit taste uh, that runs toward what I'll call dark prog, <laughs> which I think is the funniest term he uses through the entire piece. Now, if if you know anything about Robert, which maybe some of you don't, because you're you're younger and this era of rock criticism isn't really anything you paid attention to or consumed, uh, Ro Robert is not a huge Prague guy, you know, not to say that he hasn't uh, lent an ear to uh, more experimental or cutting edge groups over the years. He certainly has, but uh, uh, progressive rock is not necessarily, uh, you know, in his wheelhouse or one of his favorite movement movements or genres. Uh, so, you know, that that obviously uh, continues to be the case. I guess, but uh, I find it interesting that he would uh, categorize a lot of the music that I enjoy these days as dark prog. Uh, but still, uh, uh, I would maybe agree with that assessment to a degree because uh, I do like some newer technical records, some uh, more conceptual and long-winded records, which is uh, kind of in league with uh, proginess, progisms. I guess you could say, uh, if I'm going to make up my own <laughs> lazy terminology here. Uh, and some of it does tend to be quite dark. I was looking at some of my 10 out of 10s uh, a little while ago and thinking, man, who who would love all of these records outside of somebody who really uh, is maybe depressed or likes some really dark music or something? So dark, dark prog, I'm not completely against that categorization. <laughs> uh, the Godfathering, uh, Swans... Uh, this year's number one daughters on the rap end, his beloved death grips, uh, which is another one of my favorite phrases in this answer. His beloved death grips. His beloved death grips. Don't you dare speak ill of his beloved death grips. Uh, but he's clearly broader than that, which I, I think slipped by a lot of people as actually... A compliment. I have tastes that reach further than these dark underground brands of music. Um, you know, he says, uh, uh, I, although a little apparent interest in the pop end or indeed tune or indeed fun. So he, he thinks that I don't uh, like tune or fun all that much. <laughs> I'm very much a fuddy-duddy. According to uh, Robert Christgau, I, I don't like much fun. Um, not a very fun person. Um, <clears throat> but moving on from there. However, always a tragic and psychologically revealing lacuna, uh, nowhere near as insensible to hip-hop and R&B as dark proggers tend to be. So I, I didn't know that there was a whole movement of dark proggers out there and how limited uh, they usually are when it comes to hip-hop and R&B. Apparently, I'm, I'm one of the few dark proggers who's willing to kind of cross that threshold, I guess. <laughs> Though, I, I don't know how aware Robert is of the fact that uh, there are hundreds of thousands of people that follow me that listen to a lot of the same mix of artists. And, and generally, music listeners these days, because of the cultural 
uh, boundaries, those insular boundaries that have been uh, erased in a lot of ways because of the internet, a lot of people are listening to a lot of different genres all at once. I mean, not only rock, not only experimental rock, but also blends of metal and hip hop and pop and R&B. Uh, that's a lot of diverse tastes out there these days because of the ease of access the internet has created. So uh, I guess in comparison with Dark Proggers, I'm, I'm a little bit more open to hip hop, I suppose. Uh, moving on from there, uh, but note that very few female artists uh, crack his top tens, which in 2018 was really missing. Uh, he was really missing the action, which I think is a bit unfair considering the Hiro Namiri made my top ten, the Natalia Lafourcade, the um, <clears throat> No Name record made my top ten, and there were other artists that were not far from that positioning, whether it be uh, Sophie, uh, one of the biggest uh, trans artists out there at the moment, who was actually missing from some major publications' top lists. Um, also on top of that, the uh, new Caliuchis record. Fantano seems to have figured out a way to make some kind of living by disseminating his own criticism in the online age. That's an achievement, uh, but until he starts putting it in written language, I'll live without. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, you know, in another way, it's it's uh, a little backhanded, but uh, still a compliment. Hey, it's an achievement. I'm doing my own thing. It's my own kind of criticism, so on and so forth. Um, you know, I, I will say the comment that I wanted to make earlier, though, is that, look, what I'm doing here isn't necessarily the most original thing under the sun. I mean, I feel like Siskel and Ebert kind of established the whole, like, quality criticism on video thing long before I came onto the scene, long before the internet was even a thing. For Robert to poo-poo the concept as if it's not already established in some kind of way, shape, or form is uh, kind of interesting, but whatever. Most likely there are going to be people who watch my videos and will react to what Robert is saying here very negatively because maybe it comes from a place of pretension. Maybe it comes from a place of him just kind of being uh, biased due to his preferences and his generational uh, boundaries and so on and so forth. But look, um, <laughs> for somebody who has a lot of vitriol thrown at him uh, every month uh, over opinions or uh, from industry people who just don't like uh, what I do and uh, what, what they feel it uh, brings to the table and, and sort of uh, uh, the air that it sucks out of the room, I guess. Um, th this, is, this is not as bad as it could have been by a long shot. Uh, this is, this is <laughs> by far nowhere near as concerning as uh, some of the nastier things that I've seen groups of people in uh, – uh, enclaves uh, on the internet where they think they're like completely hidden away from access to anybody uh, just like dunking on me and just like talking about how horrible I am and saying like all this crazy unfounded shit that they're just like totally assuming about uh, my life, my personality, my marriage, my happiness, my mental health, my worldview, and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, even though it seems like most of what Robert thinks about me is based on a really quick glance at <laughs> Wikipedia and uh, a baseline understanding of the concept of what I do, uh, it's, it's not the nastiest thing you could have said. I'll, I'll take I'll take the W on that. I'll, I'll take that as a good thing. So um, look, you know, Robert uh, Anthony at the needle drop dot com. That's my email. Uh, if you are, in fact, uh, watching this, I know you don't watch a lot of things. You uh, more read things. But uh, hey, you know, I'd be happy to um, send you an email of any critique of any album that I have done that I've written out because I do sort of write scripts and bullet points. It's not the most well put together, uh, piece of, uh, uh, writing that, uh, you'll most likely ever read. If you do hit me up and ask Olive Branch there, if you really want to read anything that I've ever said or thought, uh, over the past few years, because uh, it's been more recently that I've been uh, typing them down than literally writing them down, because I literally used to write uh, my reviews out into like a freaking essay pad or whatever. Um, if you are really interested in sort of reading that stuff, I'd be happy to email it over. So uh, uh, Anthony at the needle drop com. You know what's up. So uh, thank you very much for uh, commenting, I guess. And uh, thank all of you very much for watching. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, uh, Robert Criscow, the Dean of American Rock Critics, reviewing me <laughs> forever.